Segment two, Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine uh, presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself. Dial us up on the web at ntnm.org, where you can watch all of our shows um, through the link to YouTube. At this point, uh, by the time this airs, I don't know if 17,000, 18,000, maybe 19,000 shows will have been watched. It's just amazing. And thank you so much for watching. Um, caps, tw caps24.org for your local CAPS meetings in West Rogers Park and Rogers Park. It'll have a list of all the meetings, other useful information. That's a site that Sunny also administers to. And as those of you who are watching obviously know, I've gone out of my way to have as many judicial candidates as possible on the show. I also want to indicate that I try to be very picky in the first place. And even I'm not a lawyer, I do have a panel of experts that tells me whether these people are good, bad, or ugly. And I get nothing but the highest praise from my next guest, who actually, as opposed to those who are running for circuit court or running for a sub-district, is running it for an appeals position on, on the bench. And, of course, there's um, a judge really doesn't campaign campaign. So, uh, you know, there, there's sort of a fine line here. I'm talking about a former state representative for, from the suburban area here and somebody who's distinguished himself in many ways throughout the community, Justice Alan Griman. Judge, how are you doing? Good, just fine. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. First of all, thank you. And I also want to point out to my former, uh, my fellow former South Shore and South Chicago people <laughs> that um, he, his parents' business was a couple blocks from my business, of course, at different points in time. And you're also a graduate of South Shore. Graduate of South Shore <laughs> High School, absolutely. Bradwell Elementary School. <laughs> Very good. It was a while ago. Yeah, that's, um, I remember those places, though. There's no question about it. Right. Um, so right now, right now you're in the circuit court. Is that where you no, are right now? I'm or? the chief judge of the Illinois Appellate Court in Cook County, here, the first district it's called. It's, it's the Illinois is divided into five appellate districts, and uh, we have 24 judges, and I'm the chief judge there. And I've been the, in the court, in the appellate court, for 16 years, and I've been the chief judge for 11 years of those 16 years. I've been elected each year as a chief judge. And appellate court uh, is basically when people appeal a case from a lower court. Right. The, the, what you have is the appeals, is the trial courts, uh, and then you have uh, the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court takes very few cases. They, have, they can choose which cases they take. And they don't take a lot of cases. We have 5,000 cases in the first district that are appealed. And so we, the truth is that the, usually the final decision in a case is the appellate court. And the first district, is that Cook County? Or? Cook County, yes. So basically the boundaries are Cook County. Cook County, that's it. <laughs> okay. Cook County. Very good. And um, 24 judges you're in charge of. And right. um, the uh, is there, a, is there any... Pers uh, specific sort of cases that get appealed? I mean, are, are there... We hear all kinds of cases. The only cases we don't hear are death penalty cases. They go directly to the Supreme Court. Otherwise, we hear civil cases, criminal cases, you name it, we hear it. So as long as people, you know, decide to appeal and all the rest of it... Uh, comes to us. We get it. Yep. Very good. And, and um, I, I would imagine you're in the Civic Center? Is that where the... No, we're in the old state of Illinois building. It's called the Blandic Center now. And where is that, just out of curiosity? It's the building that's on the northwest corner of LaSalle and Randolph. It's the old Illinois, it's the old state of Illinois building. Before the Thompson building was built, that was the state of Illinois building. And now it has um, uh, still some half of its state offices and the other half are. The Supreme Court has, a, has, a chamber, has chambers there and has a courtroom. And we have the 24 chambers for the appellate court and two... Um, to uh, large courtrooms there. Is there, um, is there, it, it, for instance, when, when, when a person becomes a judge, and I've interviewed a lot of judicial candidates, is, is there something people look to start to do? Or is, is there a specific area of interest? You know, is this something that, mean, that... Do they get a choice? No. A computer gives us the cases we're going to be assigned to. There's three judges in each panel, and the, and the computer tells us who's, the, who's the, the possible author and the two people who sit with him. Uh, that's done so there can't be any monkey business uh, about who gets the cases. Computer does it. That's the end of the story. And there's no jury in this? No juries. No. No. We just hear, we decide whether the court below was correct in their decision, whether they uh, abused their discretion, whether they did the right thing or the wrong thing. That's what we do. Uh, so I imagine there's got to be a million guidelines, as there are in most legal matters. There are many guidelines <laughs> for us to follow. Uh, right. There's the, uh, the question of jurisdiction, our jurisdiction. There's the question of... Uh, you know, all, all kinds of questions. 
Yes. Now, you know, because you really can't get on a stump and say, vote for me, and I'll, you know, you get 40 acres and a mule or anything, you know, Gone with the Wind, that's one of my favorite lines from that right. movie. There you go. Um, but you can't really stop. How do, how do my, you. Mine is, frankly, I don't give a damn, but it's all right. That was a great line, I have to say that. <laughs> Oh, by the way, speaking of the old days, I saw that for the first time at the Piedio Theater for 60 cents. No, there you go. There you go. <laughs> but a uh, wonderful movie. But, but you know, you, you're, you really can't campaign. I mean, it, it's not like, you know, you, it's a very distinguished position. As a matter of fact, first of all, any judicial job is, is a very distinguished, important position. But appeals court even more so. That's something that other judges, right. you know, look at with respect. They do indeed. Some some do. Uh, we usually when we when we reverse them, they get a little upset, but they handle it. They they learn to live with it. <laughs> and I can imagine too that uh, not to mention, and you're also the head of the uh, appeals division for eleven years. Right. So uh, yeah, that's that's pretty significant. But but you've never had, you, have you ever had a run for judge before? Yes, this? one nineteen ninety two. But now I have to run again. Yeah, no, I know that, I, I don't understand all the rules, but I know some positions that people well, run every 10 too, years. And too complicated, doesn't matter. I no, we don't to, have to get into that. I have that. to run. <laughs> we'll save the complicated stuff for, for the appeals uh, judges themselves. Right, right. So, um, I mean, you, you, you um, and I do want to point out to people, without wanting to get into politics, that he's also the uh, very distinguished husband of, of a very distinguished state representative <laughs> that I right. think very highly of, uh, yeah. Julie Hamos. Right. And, and as a CTA taker, I, I wish her all the best luck in the world. Uh, with our transit mess, and as a matter of fact, after we finish shooting today, uh, I'll be hopping on the CTA with my CTA card and editing the shows downtown. I'll tell her. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, I, it's, so you, are there, are, do, do judges team up together to do things? I know like in the circuit court, for instance, you know, we, we have, there's a number of the circuit court judges that do things together. But in the appeals division, I mean, I, I would guess that there... Well, it takes three of us to sit on a panel, so... You have to get two out of three people agreeing uh, on a decision before you can have a winner. So in that sense, yes, we have more interaction uh, than any other judges because there are, like Supreme Court, there's three of us on each panel and we have to have two at least agree. Yeah, are, are there any cases in specific, that do you look forward to certain kinds of cases? Are there any things that are particularly memorable that, that you've done or? Well, I've done a lot of cases. I did a recent porch case, I did, uh, uh, That's where the porch collapsed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, I've done a bunch of cases over the years that have been significant and uh, have had uh, lots of, uh, of um, publicity on them, you know, and, and uh, I've always, but, you know, we don't look for publicity that way. It just comes, you know, sometimes. Although I will say, it's funny, I have a case uh, that tests whether it, well, actually I should put this in. It puts Talmudic law in a way against English law. Uh, it's a case whether you do justice, because Talmudic law says each case is by itself do justice. Uh, English law says follow stare decisis, follow the, the, the rules. Don't, uh, justice isn't quite as important. So I had a case, inner city kid, um, high schooler, uh, he's in, uh, on the chess team, on the basketball team, wants to go to college, survived a druggy mother. Uh, he's a good kid, and on the way to school, a guy says, hey, want to buy a firecracker? And a big one, and he does, and he puts it in the locker, and he and another kid light it. Boom, it goes off. And uh, they, char they call the police, and they charge him with aggravated arson, which has a minimum sentence, minimum sentence of seven years. Wow. Seven years. Is he guilty? He's found guilty. And he's sentenced to seven years for this high school prank. Comes to me, to my appeals court. I get a computer assigns it to me. I look at it, and I sort of do the Talmudic thing. <laughs> uh, I look at it because I know that you know if his parents are wealthy, they come the next day with a lawyer and a check for a couple hundred bucks. And end of the story. They put him on probation for three weeks, and that's the end of the story. So I. I wrote opinion, and it, not my greatest opinion, certainly, but uh, it was in the, his, in, the, in the spirit of the Talmudic sense of doing justice, and uh, he walked free. Well, that's a nice, I'm glad I'm glad to hear it because I'm, I'm a big fan of justice, no question. And uh, that sounds good. At this point, is there a punch number yet? We don't have punch numbers yet. They're going to probably give it to us within the next week or so. 
Okay, well, very good. Well, first of all, you can come to our show website where we'll be happy to give you the punch number when, when these okay. come out. And, um, you know, I, I basically just want you to know that, that uh, I very heartily endorse um, Judge Alan Griman uh, for Thank you. election. Oh, first of all, it's the least I can do for our community. I think it's, uh, you know, everybody speaks very highly of you. Thank you. And, um, you know, there's no question that all the bar associations have, you know, ha have... CB, Chicago Bar found me highly qualified. They don't find many people by very highly qualified as a rule, so I'm very honored with that. And some of my extremely snobby friends also speak extremely highly <laughs> of you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very so much. So I want to wish you a lot of luck. And Thank um, you so you much. Vo early voting, of course, starts January 14th, and um, which is going to be just be in a few days. And um, anyway, thanks so much for joining us, everybody. We're running out of time. Thanks, Sonny Hirsch. And make sure you vote, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.